My name is Christopher Reverett, and I am on the Dope Science Show with Stephanie. What's up, everyone? Hello, welcome to the Dope Science Show with Stephanie Lowe, a.k.a. Science Stuff with Steph. Thank you for your ears and minds. I hope that the show sparks new ideas, new opportunities, and conversations. I want us to learn and grow. We are all curious, innovative, and experimental in our daily lives. We are all dope scientists. Hello, you guys. Welcome. Welcome to the Dope Science Show podcast. This is episode 32, and I'm super excited to sit down and talk to you this really dope scientist named Claudia. I knew her online as the nanotech girl, and I was like, what is, oh, she's a nanotech girl? And since then, she's been dropping knowledge and sharing all these different um, really geeky but cool facts about nanotechnology and trends, and she shares other profiles of science communicators. So I would love for you guys to uh, get a chance to meet her. Hello, Claudia. Well, hello. It's a pleasure to be here in the Dope Science Show. My name is Claudia Alarcón López. It's a Mexican name. <laughs> and, well, my Instagram, as you said, is the Nanotech Girl. Read cool facts about science and about my life. Very cool. Uh, well, I love that you said that you live in Mexico City because I've never been there. Um, what What is it like there? I live in um, San Diego County. Have you been here, like the San Diego? Actually, I studied my high school there. I can tell you um, my back. Yeah. <laughs> I was born and raised in Mexico City. Uh, I lived there until I turned 15. Then I moved to Tijuana. Did my last year of middle school there, and then I had the opportunity to study my high school in San Diego, so I went there. And I loved it, and I had a great time. I graduated to Lutetorian. I was a class president. I had a wow. really nice time. And Salutatorian, you have a lot of opportunities to study in the U.S. with good scholarships and everything. And people keep keep asking me until today why I came here, why I'm in Mexico and not over there since uh -huh. the U.S. is like the number of nanotechnology, you know? Yeah. But um, I have a lot of reasons to come here instead of there. And the main reason is that um, I love my country and I want to study here the basics and then go to another country to specialize myself. Also, it's because, um, well, this is the number one university, private university in Mexico. So I want to know, I want to study here so I know, I understand the problems of my country so that I can help it better. Because if I'm an outsider, outsider, it's um, a little bit complicated to really understand the problems that you are facing in science. And now I can, I know the struggle of getting funded. I know the struggle of the low interest, interest of students to study STEAM areas. And that was the main reason I opened my Instagram because I, I did uh, community service in like work, free workshops for kids. Mm -hmm. in like science like mini labs and and they were like beast and they didn't even know any ex experiments so i thought that science needed to be promoted you know yeah and not only in mexico overall like in the world i and the thing is you don't know what you don't know right i love that you said that you wanted to go um back to Mexico because you want to to learn within an environment that you wanted to invest, you know, your knowledge and expertise into in the long term. And it's like you don't want to – it's like exactly like you said, you don't want to be an outsider and try to come in and fix, you know, problems because you don't see the same perspective as if you were an insider, you know. And um, I think – just think that's great because you can make – a direct, you know, impact, positive impact and contribution to your community that way. So I just wanted to make sure everyone really got what you were saying in that regards. And and I, I remember in college uh, working with kids and 
teaching them how to read and write. And it's so fulfilling because did you feel like when you brought that um, the experiments to them so that they can be more engaged, did you feel like you could see magic happen, like this hope, like this light in their eyes? Did you ever have that feeling when you're working with the kids? Like what, what um, you know, reward did you feel like you got from that experience beyond like, hey, I want to, like, isn't there, didn't you feel some personal, like, satisfaction as well? Of course. Like, I mean, especially here, they don't even have Wi-Fi, you know. They don't have um, internet. I mean, they have it, but limited. And they don't have they don't have the curiosity to go to YouTube and watch a video about science or something. And they the first class I remember we asked them and we're like, oh, it's me and I wanna be here and things like that. And in the end we asked them again the same question and they were a lot of raised hands about wanting to study something related to science and that was my main driving force, you know, that yeah. if you show them, if they, if they experience it, they are going to like it, or, or at least they are going to know about it. Right. What you said, the fulfillment inside, melted because it's like giving hope, like you said. It's like opening a new world to them. Um. One of the questions I, I, I was wondering, sometimes, you know, what if you were if you were a listener right now, right? And you're like, Wow, nanotechnology. This girl, she was Valley Victorian, she traveled, I mean, she seems like she has it all together. Like, how can how can I if I I don't even know where to start, how can I take on something like that? You know, people think of that when they hear stories, when it, when they hear someone who's that, you know, um, seemingly very successful and just very focused, which you are, and they try to relate to you and they think, how can I? And one of the questions I thought about for you was, what's the hardest project you ever had, like, and were you scared and how did you, like, get through it, you know, whether you failed in the end or, or whatever, like, what, what project did you think of? Well, the first one is uh, studying in San Diego. For me, it was uh, a random opportunity, the decision in two days. And I made it in one hour. <laughs> and it was a completely new thing because, I mean, I knew English, but the English you... You are thought, taught, sorry, in Mexico, which is not the same one. Like speaking, you know, and I was afraid. It, it was, it, it, it has been my only fear in life, like the English. But mm-hmm. I think that's not really to your question. Mm-hmm. I think that you want to ask me, like, how did I get here? Or, or like tips or something i don't know Um, or what do you want me yeah i was thinking like when you face that like what kept you from being discouraged what kept you wanting to you know what brought you to the other side of your fear you know okay okay i get it i get it i will talk about my philosophy well i said i remember um, my sister in my graduation talking to me and she for the first time, she said, I admire because you had no fear into coming here. Nothing stopped you from being good at what you were doing, studying. And and she said, I admire you because I had no fear while taking the decision of coming here, like in the U.S., to study because I knew nothing. I, I mean, I, I knew English, but like... The Mexican class English, so you don't have the pronunciation, and I'm still struggling with it. But I mean, I didn't let that um, stop me from getting where I wanted to be. So, what I answer to my sister is what I hope to share with the world because it's my philosophy in life about doing things 
the clearest example of this is when well no never mind um <laughs> so i said to her you don't have to let fear be the driving force of your decision you have to embrace that you have fear but using it using it as a motivation and not letting it be the first thing ahead so with that said um i went for i went on and tell her sorry <laughs> from yeah. that on i said to her you have to be humble that in the way that you are not gonna know anything in the beginning you're gonna start from zero and you need to be humble enough to let your teacher teach you and you have to be persistent enough and have the determination to achieve what you want and you don't have to be born super smart or you don't have to be born Mm, a super good musician it all takes practice it all takes time um, the clearest example of this in my life was when I joined music class I was new in the city in Tijuana uh -huh. and I was new I, I'm always trying different things because I, I love to put myself in situations that I don't know how I'm gonna <laughs> act so yeah. I know about myself it's a, a really nice way to know yourself because you do strange things you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, it's a way to grow and I love it so I said I don't know how to play music I mean I knew when I was really little but that doesn't count because it, it takes practice to be good you know right uh-huh So I joined the class and I picked the most beautiful instruments for me. <laughs> I picked the horn and the double bass. It, the double bass is like the a really big cello that you have you have to play standing, being uh -huh. standing, you know. And the French horn is the one that you use it. You use it like in Christmas. I think that's okay. the place where you recognize it more easily but I um, I love them because they were so unique but I knew nothing I didn't even know their names I didn't know they existed you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and I said okay I'm here I was the oldest one because they were all all little kids because oh, no, wow. not a lot not a lot grow grown-ups sign it to something that they don't know, you know? That's true. So, That's so true. I, I didn't judge myself for knowing nothing. I was humble enough to start from the beginning and letting my teacher teach, as I said. And I got really good at it. And I was asked to, I was asked to join the orchestra. And I was there for a, for a year. And I got really good at the French horn and the double bass. And since then, I love music. And even though I don't have those instruments now because they are really expensive, and they they were in mind, they they I I borrow them. You're renting them. Mm -hmm. And here it's more complicated to have them. But now I have the double the the bass, the normal bass. Uh -huh. I have here. And the flute, and I know I I love learning new instruments because it's a way to exercise your brain. It's a way to express yourself. Um, I wanted to do that when I joined music class, and from knowing nothing, I know a lot, and that's a proof that that just proves that you know it's worth the journey. Like you're afraid, but Yeah. If you just do it. I love how you said be humble. Like, I don't think people realize that they're not humble like, when they're afraid. You know, they think people tend to think being afraid means you have low self-esteem. Mm 
Yeah. And maybe that is true, but at the same time, people don't realize that they could be humble, that it's okay, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. to be humble. It's okay to fail. It's okay to be the people that know less. <laughs> yeah. And that happened to me also here while studying the in my major. Because I, well, in high school, I was in a private um, high school and it was little and I didn't have a lot of options to, I didn't have a lot of AP classes. I took all of them. Uh, I took all the AP classes, but still they were none about science. Mm -hmm. I only took biology in high school and I'm studying a career that it's all about chemistry and I didn't have a class of chemistry. Wow. <laughs> so, but I wanted to be a scientist. I'm from, I'm, in high school, I studied chemistry by my own, you know, but I didn't have a class. But that didn't stop me from coming here and study chemistry because I knew, I know that it all takes time and I have smart smart peers that they were to the international olympics of chemistry and they won <laughs> and yeah all of, all of them they they have a science background and really really strong background and because you can't be accepted here if you don't have a good you have to be like really really smart and my profile looked like i'm really really smart because i was a vegetarian but i didn't have a chemistry class So I was smart in everything else but chemistry. <laughs> and all of my peers are, like, amazing at, at chemistry. But I know that in the beginning, my first semester, it was hard. But now I, I'm, like, at their level because I put effort and time. And that's it. That's all you need. Read. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You're gonna learn what you want to be and... That's my advice for everyone. Don't be afraid and try it. And don't don't judge yourself for not knowing in the beginning. Right? I think that I I mean I totally relate and and you I think people are lucky. You're lucky that you've experienced that and have such that kind of um attitude at um at such a young age, you know? Um it takes people however long it takes them before they realize that it's okay to not know things and that you can learn and you can actually, like, your accelerated pace of learning, like how quickly you can um, bridge that uh, learning curve, um, it's just based on, you know, you putting in the time and effort. Like, what seems like it's like, oh, my God, like, how am I going to match these people, like you're saying, who were, who have been doing this for years and, you know, You can. It's you know, it's just like acquired knowledge. You can actually, you can bridge the gap. And um, thank you for sharing that story because I think that's really helpful, especially because I always you seem so successful. You know, Valley Victorian. She's studying nanotechnology, and you are successful, which is awesome. But it's I always enjoy hearing that the side of the story of how you got there. You know. Yeah. Thank you. And you're successful as well. And I think. You I, I don't know. I love people that take the time to share and to care about humanity <laughs> and <laughs> informing them cool things. And what you do in this show is really, really nice. And I'm really honored to be here. Aw, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I try. I try. And that's what I tell myself. I try because, you know... I I overcome fear all the time. So, like, I to, like it's a constant thing. I think once you accept like like you were saying, you put yourself in uncomfortable situations and then you start accepting, okay, I think life comes with fear. Like, I don't think it ever goes away. Like I think it's just always there. You know? It's just always there and you just keep your, going. Why did you create this show? Why did I create the show? I created the show because I wanted to tell stories and I wanted to make films and I just wanted to reach out to people. And I just felt like 
I needed to find something I can talk about and um, engage with people. And I'm really into science and I'm into philosophy. So I thought that if I created some sort of platform for that, I could reach more people, um, build a community, and just, like, grow and, I don't know, cause this ripple effect of things. So <laughs> that's why I did it. And, um, yeah, and it keeps me from being bored. I die when I'm, do- I'm bored. I, like, go into depression. <laughs> I don't know what the, we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like I'm geared towards um, learning new things all the time. So this is just another platform for me to, like, have an excuse to reach out and do something new. And it keeps me from getting into, like, a rut, you know. And it, it gives me an outlet um, for hope. I see, like, the show is really, like, hopeful f- for me. It makes me feel like there's hope for humanity, like something good is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah those are all like the uh, um, honorable reasons yeah <laughs> that's good I'm really proud of you oh thank you thank you <laughs> I'm proud of you too I, I love watching what you do and seeing you like just do new things and reach a, you know more and more people who are all I mean pretty much geeked out about science and you might be and that what's amazing about the internet is like you don't know who you're going to reach and and how it's going to affect them you know yeah and actually it's really interesting how people message you and what they say and it's really amazing for me it has been like feeling connected to the world in a different way and mm-hmm. i loved it because people like reach me for simple things and for complicated things as well and I love that they take the time to talk to me and even though I ha- I don't reply instantly I always reply to all of them and for example now I'm helping uh, a master's degree in India getting here to Mexico to have his PhD in here oh, wow. and things like that that they have the how do you say like confidence in me oh yes oh yeah. yes that's exactly what you say but, <laughs> word is it uh, confidence in you they like believe in you yeah well exactly like I love that they reach me and have the confidence that I can do something And, for example, a little girl messaged me because she had a doubt in her homework. And I helped her. And it was so nice because she's little. She was, like, 10 years old or something. And she was like, oh, what is a um, cobble and bond or something like that. And it was so cute. And I love helping people and small things and good things and all all. Or only by talking, because I remember I posted once in my Insta story about how was your day. And all of them, like the majority of people put uh, good or something. And there were like 20 people that said it was a bad day. So I messaged them, asking them why. And they told me, and I was like, oh, okay, thank you. Like, I hope your day is getting better. But one of them replied a really, really long message saying that even though I don't know him, I, I, <laughs> even though I don't know him, even though it was just like a quick question, it changed his day because he was really, really depressed and he was about to do something really bad. And just by mm, demonstrating that I cared about her, his day, he, he, he was happy now. And those little things that we can do as 
uh, Instagram users can do something big in someone else. You don't know what who's who you are reaching. Um, you don't know what they are going through, and that's why we need to be mm, compassionate. That's why we have to be ourselves and just demonstrate that we are here, that our life is not perfect, that we have good days, that we have bad days, that we are in this world together. And for me, it's a, an amazing way to reach people. And I thank the people who created the internet because it's an amazing tool for all of us to be connected. That is so true. You know, I'm sitting here listening like, wow, that is so meaningful because it's like everyone's different, right? So for, for uh, Some of us are more introverted than others are more outgoing. And I'm where I'm going with this is for me, sometimes it's hard for me to be um, – always um engaging and always like say the right thing like what if when people contact me um and and I care you know and and just what you were saying like taking the time um like you have um you know you you reached out to take the time to um for reach out to people who had a bad day and made a real connection and it's just good to hear those kind of stories because you know, we're all human be, um, behind those screens, you know, and we have good days and we have bad days. And um, if we're just open, forgiving, and just, like, have good intentions, like, but it becomes a beautiful thing, uh, you know, a really, like, human thing. <laughs> and and I say that because from my head, uh, I don't love social media. Like, I use it, but I have a real, like some sort of yeah. aversion to it. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to now. I use my cell phone but not enough. And that's why I, I I'm not that engaging in like I don't post a lot or I don't put a lot of Insta stories but it's because I'm not as you I'm not a lover like like you know, a user yeah. 100%, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. But at the same time, you use it to its fullest advantage, like when you do use it. You know, you're actually talking to people and engaging with people. And like, I'm a person, you're a person, and you're not just a like. It's not just an algorithm, you know. And um, I think I think that's what's good about the technology is being able to actually reach people in a positive way. And um, wherever it works for you, you know, same with me, like, I'm not always there posting, but I'm like, I care about people and, and I actually want to like engage and be human across the screen, you know? <laughs> yeah. And um, it's interesting that we're talking about this topic and you're interested in philosophy because I don't know if you like the Italian philosophers from like the contemporaries, but Informing. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> like one of them um, I'm going to post about him because he came here to the school and I was amazed that he was here and I recorded the conference and I want to share it with you because it's an amazing conference it's in Spanish though so I'm going to translate it or something oh thank but you but he talks yeah of course um, he talks about the that we are living in. And it was really, really interesting because he came, he was talking about the suicide, but he emphasized in the shootings in the U.S. And he was like, okay, the policies in gun control, okay, that's a good way to to reply to that um, need, but uh -huh. that's not enough. And and he talks talks about the 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 suicide rate going sixty percent up in this decade, and like the huge increase in suicide. And he mm -hmm. talked about its reason 
And then he said, it's not enough. Um, uh, how do you say? It's not enough. Um, the answer for the reason of mass shooting was not enough by just talking about the policies or the right. suicide rates. And then he went like under and he talked about the solitude that we are living in. And oh, yeah. It touched me in such a way that it's true, you know. And we as as social media people, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Yeah. We have the personal responsibility with us to not be only in social media. To not only use Instagram or Facebook or anything. We have to live our lives and all of the people in the world. And because if you only, if you are only in front of a screen all day, mm -hmm. yes. even though you're connected, like for example, I feel connected with the world through Instagram, but it's a different connection because you have to have the connection surroundings with your neighbors with your peers with your professors you have to be there in order to not be in solitude because even though you are connected to million people through the screen if you take the screen out you are and that feeling that feeling of solitude It's what, it's the real seed of all of these shootings, all of these bad decisions in the world, because we feel alone. And that for me was like an eye-opener. And um, think about it because you like philosophy, and I would love to hear about your opinion in this way of thinking of this Italian yeah. philosopher. Send it to me. I will definitely love to read it because it's something I think about and I haven't been able to wrap my head around exactly, but it like social media, technology and screens are like a huge, huge uh, portion of my life, you know. So if I work in front of a computer, then I do my podcast, is, I'm editing, you know? His name is Franco Berardi. Perfect. And then when you can send it to me, I'll put it in the notes as well, so it can be on the show notes, and I'll um, I'll talk about it as well. And I'll share my thoughts on this episode. Of course. Cool. Cool. I did want to, yeah. I don't know how much time you have, but um, do you follow any, um, I wanted to, uh, do you follow any news at all? Yeah, actually, I love Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera is like an um, Arabian news. Yeah, I watch it. And I like it because it's like, um, it hasn't, well, I, I like Al Jazeera because it has no bias. I mean, it has bias, but it's been the most non-biased news page that I know of. Because if you, ha you have your Republicans, your Democrats, and your everything, and I think that they are not anything, and I like that. They are really objective while saying the news, in my perspective. I agree. We have, um, I don't know if we still have it, but we used to have Al Jazeera, like, America. Um, I think it must be very interesting to live outside of the American bubble. Like, I like to watch more, um, mix it up with international news, because in America, we're, we only look at ourselves. Like, uh, it's only our mm -hmm. politics, <laughs> only our events. And so even when we view uh, world news, it's presented to us through that same perspective. 
So if it's a Democrat speaking, they're saying it through the American Democratic view, and if it's a Republican and so on. So it always comes through this American filter, and it's very, like, American-centric. So I like watching other things, other networks, um, just to get, like, a different perspective as well, which is good because it's, like, so easy to get in our bubbles, you know? Yeah, it's and I I'm glad that you're interesting interested in not being in the bubble. I know it's hard work. You have to work at it. <laughs> you have to work at it because like the algorithms make it so it's like harder and harder to get out of your bubble. You know, so um, yeah, I try. I'm very much in a bubble still, but I try. We are all in a bubble. Like yeah. bubble for everyone, but. It's we are all in a bubble, and it's always hard to be outside it. It is, and and I think maybe that's why it's good to always try to challenge yourself and put yourself in new situations. It's like you're actively trying to break out of that like bubble all the time by doing that, you know? Because it's always like, all right, I'm doing something new. I'm shaking it up, you know? Like it, people uh, keeps you fresh, right? <laughs> Keeps you fresh. Did you, <laughs> uh, did you see Black Panther? Oh uh, no, I didn't. Oh man, when you you're, uh, when you see it, because uh, everyone's going to say it. I, I'm assuming because I'm American centric, you know, that <laughs> everyone's going to see Black Panther. <laughs> but um, spoiler alert: their um, his suit. They really emphasize the nanotechnology in his suit. Yeah. I- I didn't understand your question, but yes, I saw the movie and I loved it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I was. I loved it. Honestly, it's a great movie. It was. I know it was so good. I was like, ah, like, and the, I will say this. Um, my daughter saw it and she was like, "You hyped it up too much. If you hadn't hyped it up, I could have liked it more." And I was like, oh, I have been hyping it up. So I'm going to start telling people, oh, it's good. It's okay. You know, it's all right. <laughs> I love the science. And I I wanted to know what you said about the science of the Black Panther. Because I didn't hear what you said in your oh, show. Yeah. I was I saying. I love her. Mm-hmm. I was saying I loved how they uh, talked about the nanotechnology in his suit, like how his new suit, and they talked about how the suit uh, absorbs kinetic energy and then like magnif- uh, like lets it compound and then like shoots it back out, you know? Yes. I know, right? I was like, so that's how it works, vibranium. And um, so then I, I was like, well, what do we have? Uh, you've heard of wearable tech, you know, um, like having different uh, materials, clothing, or even like, um, balls and things like that that actually do that where they do ab- absorb uh, the kinetic energy and they use it to like charge devices and things like that. Have you heard of that? Not exactly about the kinetic energy, but I know a lot of wear tech clothes that are amazing. And I think that's not that crazy. I think it's kind of possible. Not maybe maybe Making the suit really, really strong while being punched twice. I think oh, no. something like that is <laughs> I, that, not exactly, but I think that nanotechnology is helping. And talking about this, I remember something that happened in my high school. So you know that the military and the army and everyone goes to high schools to to get enrollment, you know? Yeah, to recruit. To recruit, exactly. And, well, one of them, it was um, the Marines, I think. And it was this high-position man, and he talked about the Marines and everything. And in the end of the conference, he asked all of us, well, not all of us. He asked me and like a couple of more students what we we what we were gonna study, and I said nanotechnology, and he was like, "Oh, that's amazing." And afterwards, 
he came to me. He gave me his card and told me, I know that you are going to be the salutatorian because it was like the last um, semester of high mm-hmm. school. And I was like in the top. And he said, I know that you're in the top of your class. If you want to study nanotechnology, you can come with me. We pay, we pay all of your studies. And he said that the research in nanotechnology for the military, was, for the U.S. military, was like, of course, one of the high tech in the world, you know? Yeah. But it was like, um, I don't know how to say it. It was like selling my life because I had to be with them all of my life, you know? Mm, yeah. Doing research all my life. And even though it was a great opportunity and I recommend it to people over there, but for me, wanting to come to Mexico and change something in my country, I didn't do it, but I... That kept me th- thinking of what the U.S. military has in their new suits, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like including nanotechnology because he said, because I'm also a fashion designer. I studied fashion design in middle school. Um, so I have like both backgrounds, you know? Yeah. And I love making clothes and everything. And, well, he didn't know that, but for me it was, imagine wearable tech clothes, and by the time I didn't know they existed already, Mm -hmm. but I don't know, it's just super cool, and I think that the U.S. military has some really, really cool things in their suits now because you can camouflage like a hundred percent now with nanotechnology and you can do a lot of things and it's amazing and I think that's gonna help a lot help a lot because imagine a clothes that you can wear all the time and that can cover from the the cold weather like for example Mm -hmm. in that has communities with low income or communities with only one change of clothes imagine that that um, outfit can serve yeah. them all their you know, that would be revolutionary and I hope I can be there and helping in that cause because it's amazing I can see that I feel like um you know how you have that really great cut, that dress that just fits you perfect? And if you're able to use nanotechnology to make it look like anything, you can have the same dress, and it can look like so many different styles, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> download or something. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Exactly. I think so, too. Well, it was a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for sticking it through with all my technical issues. You were still fabulous. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have a favorite song or anything that you'd want me to include in the show? It could be like the soundtrack for your show. Mm. Or you can send it to me later. And then I'll put it in the show, too. Let me think. (laughs) Let me think about it. Cool. Well, you will do the intro for the next show. So the way it goes is you say your name, like I'm Claudia, um, nanotech girl, or whatever you want to say as your um, intro. And then you'll say, and I'm on the Dope Science Show. Check it out, or something like that. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So let me know when you're ready. You can do as many takes as you like. Okay. I think I'm ready. One, two, three. Hello, I'm the Nanotech Girl, and this is the Dope Science Show. Perfect. That was really, really good. Yay! Okay. Thank you very, very much. For me. Thank it you. I hope fun. you had fun. Yes, I had. <laughs> <laughs> very.
very, very cool. Well, I hope um, we can stay in touch, and then um, I hope you like the show when I release it. You really shared some really good um, information. It was really inspiring, and I think people are going to really enjoy it. Thank you very much. All right. Well, have a great Sunday. Okay. You don't have to pretend that you've got